There's Maria. Hi, Maria. Are we missing anybody? Nope, I think you're all there. You're all there. Is is Jim muted? Yeah, Jim. Yes, muted. he is. Jim, you got to unmute yourself there. I have a question before we get started. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I I I have a I have a person on on my name of Bill that I've never seen before. Is that <laughs> is that legit? Yes. It says I'm unmuted by host. Yeah, you we can hear you now. Okay. Yes, Bill is here. Um, Bill, are you a citizen? I think Bill's a citizen. Can you hear me? I am a we citizen. Can. Okay, we yes. Can now, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Sure. So let me ask a question. If someone, if the citizen, how do citizens get into this? Because I was asked that today and I didn't know how to what to tell them. They, do, they can just download the Zoom app and put in the ID. They can also call the city mail number or they, press five. Or they can call the city main number and press five. Oh, okay. And the ID is on the website. Yeah. Okay. Huh? The ID is oh. also on the website. Yeah. Okay. Is the staff ready? Yes. Brenda, would you like to give the invocation? I sure will. All That's right. Back, please. I'll Wait, well, now, I'll call, hold on one second, Brenda. Okay. We'll now call the meeting to order for April 27th, 2020. We'll have the invocation and pledge of allegiance. The invocation will be given by Councilwoman Brenda Gray. Let's bow our heads, please. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us to be here this evening. Father God, we ask you to bless all of us. Father God, we know that you are always in control, regardless of what anything has happened. Father God, bless our leaders. Father God, we ask you to bless the, the ones that's in the hospitals, the one that's dealing with this virus, as we all are. God, you are in control. We trust you, we love you, and we want to obey you. And we, we do repent, the Father. We repent for all the wrong that we've done. Father, God, forgive us. We ask this and every blessing in thy name, saints. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, if you'll please call the roll. Councilmember Bernard. Here. Councilmember Gray. Here. Councilmember Sutherland. Here. Deputy Mayor Spurlock. Here. Mayor Anderson. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. First up, we have Resolution 2020-01, extending the state of emergency. Do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor, this is Brenda Gray. I approve that we extend approved resolution 2020 the state of emergency extension. I'll Do we second. have a second? I'll second. We, we have a motion and a second. Is there any questions? Seeing none, we will call the roll. Councilmember Bernard. Yes. Councilmember Gray. Yes. Councilmember Silverlight. Councilmember Sutherland. I think you need to un unmute. Uh, All right, let me see what's going on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I got it. Okay. Do you Mayor hear me now? Yes. Uh, Mayor Anderson. Yes. Motion passed. Yes. Okay, Mayor is muted. for the minutes. 
Okay, say it again, Mayor, you were muted. Do we have a motion for the minutes of April 13th? I'll make a I'm motion that we approve the minutes of April the 13th. I second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Bernard. Yes. Councilmember Craig. Yes. Councilmember Sutherland. Yes. Deputy Mayor Spurlock. Yes. Mayor Anderson. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. We had a last minute item that was provided by email from Kim earlier today. It's a grant and uh, without opposition, I'd like to add it to uh, in between items number six. It's pertaining to a grant for equipment for the airport. Would one of the staff members like to brief us on this? The, Mayor, the one we added wasn't a equipment for the airport. It was an FAA CARES Act and it's time sensitive um late friday danielle got me and told me that by close of business april 30th it's a 100 percent federal share grant that every airport across the nation pretty much um, is receiving if they wish we're receiving um thousand dollars and there's three options and i ask um Friday after talking to Danielle that she and our new finance director get together and make a recommendation for you all and they recommend that we take option one and we use it for payment of debt services but attached to your email gives you the all the options <laughs> okay do we have questions on this so that's the so 30,000 that uh, is on resolution 1213 it's on agenda item E13. There's um, three separate things that the airport has in terms of debt. So you're going to take it off of resolution 1213 for that loan of 170. And what it says here is that there's 62,000 left. If, if that, if that's your wish is that option one actually, um, if you haven't had a chance, you may not have to read it. It's for operational expense like payroll, utility bills. We really don't have payroll out there. Uh, utility bills or payment of debt services. So if we elect that option, either three of those can be used. And, and Danielle and um, Daniel get together, thought it'd be best used for debt services with their recommendation. I personally just would look at that one because it's debt that we already have on that loan and it'll shorten that loan. I don't know what interest we're paying on that. Uh, I'm not sure, but I mean, that's debt service, isn't it? It's a loan. Yeah, that, that, I think that's what they're looking at. Okay. So would, would you say that, I mean, is that what you want it for? Or did you have other current expenses that you wanted to apply this for? Is that a question for me? Yes. Uh, Yes, we are looking at for the payment of debt services, okay. whatever debt we have out there that um, probably Dan can look at and see which one we can would best benefit the city to use this 30000 for. Well, and I'm just saying if we're going to have to pick and choose. I don't have the email that you sent out later. I, I, I didn't see it. I'm sorry if there was something that I missed there, but was it at all related to item E13 in terms of the debt that we have on those three loans at the airport currently? No, no. The, the, the grant itself is not specific to any specific debt fund. We can use no, it for any it, debt. Right. So I'm just saying apply it towards current loans that we have out there and lessen the burden on the airport that, fund. Right? That was the that was the intention. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I mean, but then what I'm saying is we have three separate loans that are out there right now. And right. the one that seems the easiest to remedy that has the shortest um, uh, what's it called term at this point is the 170,000 one where I think it says annual payment to general fund 47. I think that really meant to be 15,000 because that's what I divide 62 into four. And that's what I come up with for four years. But anyway, I would apply it towards that one. And if you all would agree, that's just my take on it. But you know, if the majority wants to go with something else, I, I just would rather get rid of current debt that we have on that loan and shorten that term. Well, Maria, uh, would, wouldn't you agree that 
the uh, the best option is to whatever is going to alleviate the most amount of interest payments. Well, yeah, but we don't have the loan interest. I think the resolutions that we had with the city were interagency or intergovernmental. The one with Wachula State Bank, I have no idea what. That's why I picked Wachula was because I'm assuming yeah. there's a higher interest on that than the other two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, my my opinion would just be whatever money, whatever for to lower the amount of interest paid the most you know the most bang for your buck basically right yeah right. okay but this application <clears throat> is just for for us to approve this for right now right and then we Correct. can let the manager and the um, finance director and the airport people decide what's right. best for the city of avon park okay i agree right. do we have do we have uh, any further questions on it if not i'll entertain a motion I'll make a motion that we use the 30,000, is it called COVID grant funds? Is that what we're calling it? CARES, yeah. COVID, uh, FAA CARES Act. Okay, uh, that uh, we apply it towards uh, diminishing uh, the amount of the loan of resolution 12-13. But don't we have to apply, don't we have to do, I'm asking, do we have to approve the, uh, the submittal of this grant first? Oh, it's already submitted. Well, he no, says, it it's, I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it has not been submitted. I put it on here because I wanted to make sure you wanted to go with option one. That's what I thought. Yep. So you want to add that to it, right, Maria? Yes. Okay. Okay, so the motion is for option one? Yes. Do we have a second? Sorry. Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member Bernard? Yes. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Spurlock? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. All right, item number six, first reading, ordinance 06-2020, budget import equipment. It's a, an ordinance of the city of Avon Park, Florida, amending the budget for 2019-2020 fiscal year, providing for an effective date. Jerry, I have one question for you, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, did the, didn't we have a charter amendment? Does that kick in one year after the amendment was ratified by the voters or did it kick in immediately? Because do we need an ordinance or do we need a resolution for this? Didn't uh, we change? I think you, I, I recall that we did make that change and it kicks in immediately. There's no uh, delay on it. It kicks in on the effective date in the charter amendment and uh, ordinance was effective immediately. So do we need an ordinance that requires two readings or do we just need a, a resolution and be done with it tonight? Well, you, you you don't have a resolution before you, though. You have an ordinance, so you don't save any time this time, but it's, it's nice to make a point of that for the next one. Okay. Yeah. And can I add something there? Yes. I, I had asked that question of Danielle, obviously, because she was here, and she said, told me it didn't take effects until next fiscal year, but if Jerry said it takes effects now, that I mean, it's good for so we know. Well, I don't, I don't recall that. It had been in the... Uh, the actual vote, the uh, the ballot is saying it won't be in effect till next fiscal year. I'll check that while we're sitting here, but I don't believe it was. I don't, don't recall it. I'll okay. Check it. I guess what I was um, leading to was: is there any deadline on this that would make us um, have to? I guess it's no difference if it's a if it's an ordinance. We have to do it again anyway, but it won't put any. Um, um, what do you call it, bumps along the way in order it, of getting the grant um, approved, would it? I mean, we're okay on time? According to Danielle, yes, but if, uh, if you are working with her on it, if you want to add to that, if I'm wrong. I don't, what is the harm in continuing with the ordinance? I'm not nothing, seeing Nothing, the nothing. There's no harm in it whatsoever. I was just wondering if there's a deadline for the application, is it going to surpass or is it sooner than when the ordinance is read for the second time? I see. <laughs> okay, this, this Jerry, um, the uh, the ballot says nothing about it going into effect next year. 
or next year's budget. It just simply says uh, Section 5.03 is amended to conform with state law allowing the city to pass budget, budget amendments by resolution as well as by ordinance. So I'm okay with the ordinance as it is, uh, but if it's a resolution in order to save time and there's a deadline for application for this grant, like there is with the other one that um, on the CARES, I just didn't know if it's going to be like before our next meeting. If that's the case, we could change it to a resolution, can't we? If not, I'll just wait until the next meeting and I'm good to go. Mark, is there, is this going to... As far as I... Mayor, as far as I know, the answer would be no to that because Danielle knew it was going to take a second and I have no doubt she would have told me if the, you know, was, was going to interrupt the, any timeline on this. If, I, if, if I may chime in. Yes, sir. Uh, this is Dan. Um, and uh, hello to everybody. I haven't had the chance to officially meet everybody. And I'm going to apologize right now if I inadvertently refer to you all as the board, because that's all I've dealt with my whole life. Um, and this is my first time with council. My understanding is the ordinance is to amend the budget, and then the next item is a resolution to approve uh, the contract with uh, FDOT to purchase the, the equipment. So we can still maintain the ordinance uh, budget reading without impacting the, um, the resolution to basically um, go into the uh, approve this contract. Okay. For the grant. Nice to meet you, Dan. Thank hey, Dan. You. Hey, Dan. Hello. <laughs> okay. Is there a motion for the ordinance? I'll make I'll a motion it. that we approve 06-2020 budget amendment for airport equipment grant. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member Bernard? Yes. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Spurlock? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Next up, item number seven, resolution 2003. The resolution of City Council of Avon Park, Florida, providing for the adoption of a joint participation agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation and providing an effective date. Thank you. Staff, would you like to preface this? Um, I can start off. <clears throat> last week, our uh, last board, uh, board meeting, uh, council meeting, I'm sorry, there I go. Uh, Mark had mentioned this was a $100,000 grant, <clears throat> and he said, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I wasn't going to correct him at my first council meeting, so. Um, the total grant is 135000 The $100,000 is just the tractor itself and not the implements. The implements are uh, another 35000 So it's 135000 and some change. All uh, quotes are attached, and they all came as a part of uh, some wide bid, either through the Sheriff's Department or FDOT or I think that the state of Florida. Um, so all the information, uh, that's probably the bulk of this packet is uh, this agreement. And uh, I'll, if, if anyone else has something to add. Uh, okay. I know that Danielle talked about this grant last year when we were discussing the budget and she brought up the brilliant idea to make sure that we got these funds. So you need to send her a big thank you. Is there a match on this grant by any chance or is it 100% fully funded? It's 100% reimbursable. Okay. Motion that we accept uh, resolution 2020-03. Hold on, Maria, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I need, sorry. To change, I need to change that short title to adoption of a um, um, grant agreement instead of joint participation agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation. So it will read a, a resolution of the City Council of Avon Park, Florida, provide for adoption of a a grant agreement with the Florida Department of Transportation and provide an effective date. Uh, the reason I, I do that is because joint participation agreement is something totally different. Okay. Is there a so moved? So second yeah. by Brenda. We have a motion and a second. Is there further questions on this resolution? I have a question. Yes, sir. The, um, 
the Rhino Batwing mower. Yes. It showed that uh, the description that we got from Glade and Grove Supply dated March 10th was for 23300 But then there's another quote on the page before that on 414. It says 20000 Three hundred, so there was a three thousand dollar difference there, a month a month later. So, I just question: Am I seeing something incorrect, or is there something not there? That's correct. It's about uh, two thirds of the way. Okay. Was the was the one for twenty thousand? Was that a month earlier than the twenty three thousand? No, the the one for twenty thousand was for four fourteen, and the one for twenty three thousand was for three ten. Oh. Actually, I asked Danielle that when she first brought this to me, and the they're giving it cheaper um, than off the the one was off the uh, Florida Share Association contract at twenty three three, and they're going to sell it for twenty thousand three hundred. Okay, that, that's what I was hoping. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> yeah, that was a good catch. I, I asked her the same thing. Okay, good. All right, Are there any you, further questions? Yeah, no. before you put on it, uh, I got one, one more in the first paragraph there at the bottom of the, of the resolution. It says uh, uh, adopt the supplemental joint participation agreement. Just take out supplemental joint participation. Yeah. Okay. Would we need another motion or does that suffice? Uh, motion's fine. We did the amendment before first reading. Okay. All right, if there's no further questions, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Bernard? Yes. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Spurlock? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Item number eight discussion of quarterly finance report. Dan. Dan, pleased to have you with us. Yeah, it's somehow I jumped uh, about three pages further than I needed, but I do have a hard copy. <laughs> um, you should have had uh, delivered to you the quarterly uh, finance report. Um, yes. Which is now 50%. When I got this uh, report, the first thing I did was I went through and I highlighted every over item budget, uh, which I'd probably about 25 30 of them. Um, and one of my uh, goals is to um, basically make those uh, amendments to bring those back into line to receive uh, who's being charged, where they should be or where they shouldn't be, um, and try to make uh, some of those adjustments as well so we can uh, hopefully next quarter eliminate a few of those. Um, I've done this long um, Sometimes it feels like the, uh, the little boy putting his finger in the dike. As soon as you plug up those holes, one or two more seem to spring open. But uh, we'll uh, we'll work on this and uh, we'll try to tidy it up a little bit. Any questions? Are there any questions for Dan? I just had just a couple. And regarding, um, and I spoke to Jerry about this the other day. Um, his his budget has seemed to um, get really big, and I know that he's been doing a lot of extra work with the new core grant and the contracts and all that stuff. So. Where are we going to pull the money to offset where he is? I think he's a cent right now. I mean, do you have any idea? There's lots of other, um, it looks like, um, not consulting line items, but one of those types of phrases being used. Or professional services or something. Yeah, yeah, that. Thank you. So I was just wondering where that's going to get pulled from. Anyway, you guys are the math guys, so I'll leave it up to you, but I was just concerned about that because um, I don't want that to go so over budget that we sure. have to put a rein on Jerry because I think he's Absolutely. really important. Yep. And I just, yeah, um, we'll have that discussion. Um, I think uh, we've got a budget meeting. We just talked about that uh, coming up here shortly. Um, we're, we're starting to put some numbers together already for next year mostly on the salary and uh, the employee costs because that's the largest part of uh, our budget. And uh, that's uh, where we're at. There's a, a few things that I have to concern myself. I shouldn't say concern, but that I'm concerned about and the expense 
less to worry about it's the uh, revenue side uh, because uh, this whole the Florida revenue piece is uh, new to me. So uh, I've been in contact with some of the other uh, finance people uh, in the county and uh, with uh, their help, I'm sure we'll be able to get through this, so. Did I understand you to say that we have more expenses than we have revenue? No, no. <laughs> my, my comment was from a budgeting perspective, the expenditures are the easy, easier to do than uh, than the revenue because uh, we haven't we don't have the tax rolls yet from the county and and again I'm just kind of learning uh, still like where our millage rates are and things like that but uh, no that's not that's not what I meant to say at all so okay thank you hopefully we'll have now. a surplus uh, <laughs> do we have any other questions for Dan no. If all possible, though, I'd like permission from the city manager to communicate with Dan if I have any questions regarding the budget. That way I don't suck up so much time at this council meeting. That's fine with me. Thank you. Is there any further questions? If you don't mind, because I've had a few questions on it as well. Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. No, 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 not now. I just want to oh. communicate with the finance director. Oh, of okay. Course. Is that right? Of course. <laughs> Very Thank good. You. Thank you, Dan. We're moving on to uh, item number nine, Classic Caladium's insurance quote. Robert, that's you. Yeah, this is a project that I took on from David Flowers. He had been in communication with uh, in our insurance company over damages from Hurricane Irma. Um, I got three quotes for the insurance company that they requested. And the repairs were right at 400,000, uh, 459,000, something like that. What they're going to give us for insurance money is minimal for, for what we need. I think the, the amount we're getting back is in the $30,000 $30, range. It's just not going to cover the repairs needed to that place. There is a report from their engineer that they brought in. Uh, it should be in your packet, I hope. But what? on the TNT, I believe so. Yeah, that engineer's report. He's stating the damage there is just from the age of the building, not hurricane damage. So we have got to come up with a pile of money to do repairs on this building. Can I ask Jerry to look at the contract that we have with Classic Caladium because there's a clause in there somewhere that states that um, repairs and things to the building would be discounted off of their rent or their lease. And I just don't know what those things are. Yeah. If that's the case, then I mean, we've done it before. I mean, that's the reason why. They track. They've been fixing it up and adding to it and deducting their um, rent payments or these. So anyway, if that's the case, I mean, I'd hate for them to um, move out, obviously, but um, it's it's a it's a good arrangement for them. It's a, it's a wonderful arrangement for them. A terrible <laughs> arrangement for you. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, if, this, if this report is correct, that they're not doing a very good job of maintenance. Well, well, I don't think that, yeah, I think the contract says that we're supposed to maintain it. So I, when they make improvements and things, they're allowed to make those improvements and deduct their, their when they enhance with a capital project or something. But when it comes to um, regular maintenance, I think it's on us. Okay. But that's why I, I just wanted they, uh, Jerry to look at it um, only because I want to see exactly what we are on the hook for. And if it's something that looks like we can fix it, maybe there's a grant out there that it's a city owned building. Um, I know that uh, there's going to be some communication between the city and a, a, another grant tour from the state. And maybe this is something that could be added to the list since it is one of our buildings. Just a thought. We have but, to the, the majority of the repairs on that are roof repairs. Yeah. Okay. But in terms of, in terms of mitigation, if they're not repaired, then it could get worse if there's another storm or a hurricane or something. And then we're going to be on the hook for all the damage on the inside. Definitely. Right. Did we have any budgeted funds for this building this year? I don't think so. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. 
All my right. One, so my one question, if I could interrupt, is that uh, yes. you know it's their company, the insurance company, hired for them to come out and come out with the report to show the value of what they should be paying. Is there any way we can get an independent report from somebody we could hire that we could argue this? This way is that feasible or even realistic? I'm all for it if there's someone else that can bring it. But I mean, the insurance company is only going to pay what they're going to pay. Their their comments speak to such. You, you, yeah, they, you can't they, argue with the insurance company. Yeah. Sure, you can argue with them, but you know it's uh, <laughs> like arguing with government. <laughs> <laughs> Gets nowhere. We're wasting our breath. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, it, if somebody could try, you know, and say this is not, but I, they got if they had just basically a uh, uh, adjuster come out and look at it and say, oh, well, I think it's this, then you might have something to sink your teeth into. But they had, they had a firm come out and actually do the appraisal of the uh, damages, and I, I think they're going to stick, they're going to live with that because they have them on the line. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So at this point, I guess we're going to uh, look for potential grants and reconvene well, i'm just thinking out loud if jerry can take a look at it and see exactly how we have to go fix it i know that dr hartman has been very amenable to everything that we do we work really well together with them you know and I, I, they know that this building was not the best building when they moved in and i don't think their expectation is that we spend a half a million dollars right now but if there are grant funds out there he needs to know that and that we're applying for it and if we don't we're just gonna have to pick away at it yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to look at it, but I just want to make an additional comment. I, your, any improvements that they do that they're getting a, a write-off for, you guys should approve those first. They should we have. have. Yeah, they all, all have been in the past. They all have. All right. Because the roof didn't look that, that good to me. <laughs> the one that no longer any good. It, it didn't look like a real, but, you know, I'm no expert. Okay. <laughs> Mayor, can I add something? Yes. Okay, we've got this sworn statement and um, proof of loss to sign. So yes. we're going to accept the 24-469-99. We're not going to go. I'm not back. happy with that. Well, Jerry, Jim, in, your, in your opinion, what should we do? There's a line item here at the very end of their document where it says that if we are aggrieved by their decision, we have the right for the Florida Office of Insurance church and to do a, a, a review if we complain why don't we complain okay. I agree. do we have Gary what say you well I say that you know you you we should have our own expert evaluate it just our feeling like it's not enough it's not going to be good enough for the, the insurance commissioner to look at this but if we have somebody that's equivalent to their their person that looked at it say no their person's wrong and you know you should get 50% more or 70% more we have something to sink our teeth to and they might even negotiate with that but then you have the expense that you have to go into to get that person to do the, the the evaluation i don't know how much that costs it might not be that much um, would it be I, would it be considered the fact that walls and this other contractor went in there and gave estimates i mean are those considered valuable no. estimates i mean if uh, but you know the, it's evidence I mean, they're talking about reframing bathrooms uh, you know, that's not part of the roof. Uh, you know, there's a lot of expenses in here that are not related to the roof. And I thought we were just going to be looking at the roof. Those damages in the bathroom were, were from water leaks coming in and rotting the wood. And they were saying that uh, the leaks have been there previous from the hurricane, which I don't know. Did well, they report it? Well, Did I think we need, to, we, we, need to, we need to get um, the, the folks over at Classic Caladium to say, what, it's after the hurricane or before the hurricane? And, well, you know, evidence. you know, I think someone really needs to look at this. I mean, they're wanting us to replace China sinks. That's not hurricane damage. There's yeah. plumbing in here for new sinks. I mean, you know, it just seems like this has a wish list of all the things that they want to get repaired, but yet not all of them. They're cosmetic, perhaps? Maybe, yeah. you know? Well, right. And, and what we're deciding tonight is not exactly what repairs are going to be made. We're just simply no. deciding if exactly. we're going to accept so, this bid from the insurance or not. 
So, I mean, I'd like for someone to go through it and pick out what is roof related, damage related. I mean, if the bathroom jams, the door jams are damaged, okay, that's one thing. But I mean, are the sinks cracked and broke? They're old or, you know? Right. Right, but that doesn't have anything to do with us accepting or denying uh, no. the insurance statements here. So No, but we're basing what we're receiving off of these two estimates and saying, wow, we're not getting what we deserve, when in reality, the estimates are nowhere near the work that's needed based off of the damage. Those right. I mean, I, you know, if they carve that stuff out that's not cosmetic and not related to the actual damage and then we can talk about what we're going to have to need to fix it but in the meantime i mean i mean if you want to call the floor of insurance regulation have at it and see if you can get them to give us some say on if we can get more funding but i just doubt that engel martin and associates are going to come through i don't think they will i have a question too for mark uh going back to that sworn statement and proof of loss Near the bottom there, it says prior payment of over a million dollars. What is that for? To the city? I mean, so, yes. It's, it's, it's where they had the uh, the whole loss and damage was one million three. So I guess the million was for everything besides this building? Well, we did receive, I mean, I got a copy of the Way Back When check, and it excluded um, the holding and it was for $929,250. That was the PGIT combined claims account. So uh, this was not, this building here was not on this. Right. But uh, is that what you're talking about, Jim? Yeah, because if um, they're talking about overall depreciation and, and deductibles, you know, it seems like all that is being downloaded negatively against the Caladium building and that's where we're suffering the most uh, uh, money out of pocket. Yeah, I think it's interesting that police building that was uninhabitable got ninety something thousand dollars, and the um, yeah. classic Caladium gets less than twenty five. <laughs> yeah, or twenty four thousand or something. Yeah, right. Minus. Right. So it's just I don't know. It just seems a little fuzzy. Now I will say this: I've had insurance claims on my residence before, and I've argued with them, and I've gotten more money back. So. That's just me as a residential owner arguing with the claims people. I don't know whether it's worth looking into hiring a professional person to, or I didn't really go into the state. That's what they're there for. So let's let them take a look at it. And maybe they'll get a bump up on it. it won't hurt. Yeah, but you know what? The state has to know that all of this isn't, what I, I think needs to be done is really carve out all of those um, cosmetic and, you know, beautification things that, that are, on the list from the contractors and stick to the roof and the actual damage from whatever is going on there. But I don't know, it may not drop it that much, but it just seems, you know, are we going to be on the hook for all that later on? I hope not. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, I've been in there and I looked at the bathrooms in that place that they're talking about. Those bathrooms are completely deteriorated. They cannot be used. All the wood is rotted, is rotted away. Uh, they're about to fall. So those have to be completely replaced. What is that damage from, Robert? Just from wear and tear water or from the damage. hurricane? Water Remember damage, what? but I don't know if it- Or roof leaks? Yeah. So from roof we leaks. Is it water leaks? I don't know if it, if it was from the hurricane or prior hurricane or what, but I know uh, all the wood is just completely rotted in there. Yeah. So the only thing that's viable going forward seems to be uh, uh, arguing with the state as far as the amount they're gonna send to us. It, well, it is going to it, it's going to prolong it. Who, who was that speaking? I'm sorry. I thought you were done. Uh, no, I agree with what was said regarding pulling out the club, you know, and uh, deal with that later on. But this, just deal with the things the, the insurance company should pay us for as opposed right. to everything else because we, we need to have it clean. Otherwise, you know, we'll look, we'll look silly going to the, to the um, insurance commissioner. Okay, well, who who's going to do that? Is that going to be a city staff member, or we have to hire someone? No, I, it can probably be a city staff member. But we need to know, you know, what, you know, and somebody needs to go in and ask them questions as to why this is this way and why that's that's this way. Did what was caused by the hurricane and what was not? Yeah, I have a question. Mark, do you, do you have anything to say to that? Did we just totally omit this from our? Uh, 
insurance when the storm came through. It was omitted, yes. It wasn't discovered until after the check arrived that this was part of the damage, this and the police building. They just weren't included on the original assessment, but they are now. That's what we have here in front of us. Uh, Garrett? Yes. I, I would like to add that whomever go in and talk to the um, um, classic Caladium people, we need to really know um, if, like someone else said, that if this damage was done prior to the hurricane, or and if it was done prior to the hurricane, was it for us so that we could could have went in there and did some maintenance on it? You, you I, agree what I'm saying? I agree with that too because yeah. I mean, their responsibility to keep the keep the place from going downhill because of lack of maintenance. Yeah, if you don't tell us something is broke, then how can we fix it? Yeah. <laughs> They yeah. did tell us. <laughs> we were told about it, and this has been an ongoing process. has been going on for quite a few years now, trying to get money to get that repaired. And, Before uh, the hurricane? Yeah, after the hurricane, uh, Bob Hartman took pictures of all the damage. No, we said before the, the hurricane. Street. Yeah, right now. Before yeah. the hurricane, were they complaining, Robert? No. Okay. Okay. So, Mark, I would ask you, uh, which staff member do you intend to uh, send in there to, to do this? Well, I, I think the best one right now would be Robert. And my question to Robert is, when we got these estimates, were you there with them, or did they just go and meet with uh, the representatives from um, Classic Palladium? They met, they met with representatives from Classic Palladium. Off the list that David Flowers discussed with um, Sam Winkle from Ingle Martin. Okay. Jerry, you were saying something. I couldn't hear you. What was that? Well, no, I think that um, we should have staff member there when uh, you're mm -hmm. getting quotes for our building because they, they may want pie in the sky. They may, like your sinks, you know, maybe you can get a lot cheaper sinks, but your, your contractor is quoting expensive sinks for whatever reason. And uh, you know, that's your thing. It was just a, uh, not a legal comment, just a practical comment. I see. So, uh, Robert, do you need um, advice or do you have questions uh, from the council or city manager as to how to carve different things out? I will get with Mark tomorrow. Um, I'm also going to take a trip to Classic Palladium and look around myself and see what. And I'm going to meet with Mr. Uh, Robert Hartman and down to the bottom of what really happened there. If he's got pictures, I want to see the pictures. I haven't okay. seen them. And once you get that information, Jerry, are, are you going to be the one that, that writes a letter to the state or what? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you get, get enough – evidence you know uh, that, that, that the, the analysis was wrong and we can approach them first and then uh, if that doesn't work then then go to the state okay so after the after the information is collected then uh, the city manager and uh, Robert would then call you Jerry and, and hash that out okay I just have one last question for Mark do we have a risk manager <laughs> No, our HR director who's on here is also the risk manager. So, I mean, wouldn't he be the one calling the Florida Office of Insurance Regulation and not having uh, Jerry do it at 175 an hour since his budget is already exceeded 100%? Just asking. I like that. If, if that's what y'all wish. Well, I mean, you're the city manager. I'm just saying. You just yeah, I, mean, no, I would have yeah, to talk to him to see if he's, he's ever made a call like that and, and you know. Maybe we can just get advice from Jerry and, and he can make the call. Sorry, Jerry. No, not a problem at all. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not short on work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Is there anything further on this topic? No. Seeing none. Moving on to item number 10, parking lot, old firehouse. Robert, you again. Okay. I uh, met with um, – Carl Cool on the parking lot, and we look at things there at that parking lot. Uh, number one, we have no drainage whatsoever on those streets. There's no stormwater drainage whatsoever, so we're going to have to put a retention pond to be able to put a parking lot there. And I don't know how much 
area that's going to eat up out of the parking lot. So we, we could possibly end up with a parking lot with only 15 parking spots there. Or we leave it as it is and not pave it and not have a retention pond. Exactly. The grass seems a little cheaper. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree too. Okay. Well, there's nothing stopping us from, from putting a parking lot there in the future. Um, exactly. You know, so, and we may end up with a, uh, you know, with a grant that could take care of something like that in the near future. Exactly. Okay. All right. Is there anything further on the parking lot? Well, no. it goes back to, we had talked about the last time, and I guess it'll come down to the church service center later on down the packet. So I'll just drop this one and move on until you get to the line agenda item next thank you all right item number 11 discussion of utility billing accounts maria so this is going back to the conversation that we all had at the last meeting regarding the stimulus and um this was and i wanted to clarify with all of you you know when i stated that we had i think it was 276 businesses those were businesses that have occupational licenses. In other words, they're inside the city limits. So we have other businesses, but they are not within. The, so the goal was to use any stimulus funding that we could get and assist them. So I know Kim was working on some um, carving out the CRA area. Uh, and, and I listened to a webinar with the FRA and basically residential cannot be CRA cannot pay for, for a residential stimulus, but the, uh, the city's general fund could, or any fund having to do with water sewer. So if we carved out the occupational license buildings, then we would have, I believe, some money to be able to give back as a stimulus to the businesses. And, and as long as we're still looking at how, many, how much money we have available, which is part of the reason why the budget was on tonight, I still want to pursue this and not let it slide. So um, Kim had also said that we have, I think Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, 6,000 accounts, but yet not all of those are all in the city. So again, it would require us carving out only what's inside the city limits. The people that pay our millage, that pay our you know, utility franchise fees and, and businesses that have occupational licenses, people inside the city limits would be the ones eligible for this. And right. I wanted to get the council's consensus on Otherwise, this will be unaffordable if we do it for all the residents and businesses outside the city. So I'm of the opinion we work for the city of Avon Park. Those are our constituents, and therefore we need to stay within our limits in terms of giving any type of stimulus. But I'll defer to the majority. And uh, Maria, I agree with you on that. I think we should stay within the city limits of Avon Park of the businesses. And let me make sure, that, did I understand you say that the uh, CRAs cannot you they can contribute they can contribute as a stimulus to the businesses but not the residences so there will be some it'll help us if we end up doing this in terms of the businesses yes any so business outside i'm sorry any business outside the cra obviously would have to be part of the general fund that we would provide it's, so it's your intention to use crs for all businesses inside the cras and general fund dollars for all businesses inside the city limits but outside the cra districts so you're saying yeah. correct yeah yeah it, it, it assists it helps the city with its fund and you know it will not deplete the cra fund if we use it wisely and still keep some money in there for facade grants okay and do i understand that we're still waiting on some information yeah, yeah. I, I'd ask him to pull it off the agenda because she was still trying to get some um, concrete non county. They have to carve out the CRA from the city. They have the software to do that. Otherwise, Kim has to do it manually. I see. Um, it's doable, but it'll take her about nine months. So that's <laughs> going to be a long time. Right. Anyway, right. Um, so Kim kind of knows the direction, but I just wanted to get a consensus from you guys. That way she knows what numbers to acquire from the county mapping department and from the, I think it's the property appraiser <laughs> or the tax assessor. Yeah, and as far yeah. as the citizens, I got a report today um, about the citizens that are inside the city limits. Um, I, get, I don't remember right off the top of my head the exact number, but it was around 5,300 and something. And um, How many? 5,300. Okay. 53 something. And then um, 
And then, yes, I am waiting for the property appraiser. He's supposed to be getting me some more CRA maps and a list of the businesses that are in the CRAs, and he did not get back with me today. And I did reach out to him again today, so I will plug in. You're getting muffled, Kim. Your voice is not coming through. No, I, I will be um, reaching out to the property appraiser's office again. I reached out again today and didn't hear anything back, but I will continue to bug them until I get what I want. Okay. So, All right. Is there anything else on this? I just want to clarify one thing. We're not looking to give stimulus money to businesses outside the city limits. Is that correct? Correct. correct. That's okay. correct. Okay. And well, this, by the sure. way, will help capture, you know, we may want to say that if you are a resident and you're in a rental, that they show proof that it's a rental, um, because that will help us narrow down also whether or not those people have been inspected. So it could be a day of being able to verify our own numbers in order that we get the funding out appropriately and fairly. And let me ask another question. Uh, would there be any distinguish between businesses that um, operate out inside their homes? They have to have an occupational license. And from what I recall, we do not issue occupational licenses for home businesses. It's bricks and mortar. Oh, oh okay. All right. Bricks and mortar businesses, if they have an occupational license that the city gave them, I'd be surprised. But if they have it, then either they were rezoned or something like that. Because I just want to, what I'm going at, Maria, is to that we don't double, you know, and not saying that they would, but an agency would not, a yeah. home owned ran business would not double deal. I, Absolutely. Good point. And you know That's what? That's a good point. Yeah, and we're small enough. I think that when you end up combining the two lists, if you have an Excel spreadsheet, you can find the duplications just by strap numbers, and that would be really easy for staff to do. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Good one. I like that. I don't know. So I just want to clarify. I'm sorry. Yes, I just want to clarify one thing. We have business buildings in town that are empty. They do not have an occupational license, so they would not be eligible. Yeah. And we would have to make sure that whoever is eligible had an occupational license when COVID hit. Yeah. Okay. What if there is multiple entities inside of the same office? It's based off, then they'll have to split it. It's only going to go per strap number. So if you have a, an owner of a building that has five businesses inside, it goes to the strap number. Let them, let them fight it out. Uh, what I'm saying is if, I don't know, I'm even sure that we have a building like this, but if there's, you know, five, in one building and there are five independent businesses is it fair to say that only one of them is going to get it or the one that owns it's going to get it and it'll be the one with the account the one with the yeah. account number because normally, every business is going to have you know if, if you have let's just say a building that has seven businesses inside if that person is leasing it out to those seven individuals either those individuals have their own separate water account and then they would get it, or the owner of the building carries it for all of them Okay. And that's I normally see. the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So it's based off of occupational license. You know, count individual businesses. It should be based off of licenses alone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Item number twelve: Church Services Center. Maria. Okay. So I um, after the last meeting and the confusion that ensued from the conversation of council, it was pretty clear to me that there was. Uh, you know, staff did not know what to do with the info that we had provided from the previous meeting back in March. Anyway, I called Mr. Finnerman. Um, he is the person in charge of the, of the church service center, as well as Mr. Hay. Um, both of them love the idea of being able to go back into the old police building. No, they cannot afford to build a new building themselves. We had discussed at the meetings that we had with council that there might be a potential for us to fund them the building. We would lease them the land. That way they can never sell it. It would always revert back to the city. Um, we talked about using some of the money to redo the parking lot. That was just mixed tonight. I'm not saying take that money and give it to them either. We could still set some money aside and give them what we desire to them. For them. But um, they thought that if if we decided that we were going to go out to bid, if we go out to bid, then they, Mr. Hayes, said that he would submit a bid, even though he submitted one already and left it in a sealed envelope. He didn't know which way the city was going to go. 
So if we do go out to bid for this, um, it likely will be less than 25,000. So it falls within the city manager's purview of decision-making on, on bids. So um, I, I don't know if the train left the station and we already put it out to bid, that's fine. But like I said, Mr. Hayes said that he'd submit. But if it comes down to the point where we end up tearing it down, other contractor does, are we gonna give them funding to build a building in there and move them out of the Yana building? And that's what we've been thinking and hemming and hawing about. It sounded like the council was um, on board with that. I just want to get it confirmed from you all that that's what we're going to do. And if we are going to do that, how much are they going to get? Okay. So, well, you know, they uh, don't have, I'm sorry. Do you know what the actual amount was that we got from the entrance? Hang on. I've got the exact number right here. I've got that info from the insurance. 90 something thousand, right? And I'll tell you in just a second here. It is, let me see. I probably can see City of Avon Park. I need to look at each one of these different buildings here and I'll tell you. It was like 92 or something, and but let me confirm. Like that, yeah. But so what, what you're asking is that you want us to pay to take, knock the building down and then give them money to build another building and then right. the renters for a dollar a year or something like they have their own utility bill they'll be paying for that which they currently i believe do not so that will save them some money but um you know if they come up with a design of something that they want to put there and, and from what it sounded like they can find a nice size um, metal building that they can make it pretty to make it fit in with our downtown you know theme um they could probably come in at what forty five thousand for that Mr. Hayes told me that he was not going to be charging them any rates other than just the actual, um, you know, building itself. So he's been very forthcoming in the sense that he's going to try to do it as inexpensively as possible so that it doesn't hit the taxpayers as hard either. We but, were supposed to get bids for tearing it down. Do we get that? I don't believe we have yet. I thought we voted on that last time, though. We haven't got bids yet. I don't think so. I mean, it would have been 30 days and we haven't had a meeting but 14 days ago. Oh, does Robert have any information? The bid packet has been, been prepared, but I don't know if it's been advertised yet. Okay, okay, good. So right. the question is, if it's, if it's pretty well known that it's gonna cost less than 25, do we wanna go out to bid? So that's one question. If we go out to bid, then Mr. Hayes will submit a bid in that and you'll have two other ones. I don't see the harm in that at this point. Um, because he said he would submit. Is this all reliant on him? I don't know, but um, we had talked at the last council meeting that if we went to bid too high that he could come in after the fact and say, well, I can do it for less. Well, we don't want to do that because that would be, you know, kind of- A unethical. dollar less. <laughs> <laughs> dollar less. So, you know, I, I just think that let's just go to bid and make it squeaky clean and whoever submits, submits. And if he does another bid, then bid for him. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So oh, have about that building would be hazardous material. We don't know if there's asbestos in there, if there's lead or anything else. Oh, no. Which is why it's not that it has taken care of. And when they did the inspection, then when they decided to um, um, tear it down, I thought that that was already taken care of. When they well, did inspection, that was correct. That liability. It depends on the contract. I mean, if the if the contractor who wins the bid says in their contract that they're responsible to take care of it, then they're responsible. That's right. And I, I think you're putting together the uh, specifications for removal of, of that stuff anyway in the bid document. Absolutely. There you yes. go. Oh. I say we put it out to bid, make sure that that is in there about hazardous materials and call it a day. Yeah. I did suggest to, uh, I spoke with Mark, and I did suggest that um, that's better to know what you have up front for you all to do that. Otherwise, you're not going to know what you're going to get for bids, because they're not going to pay somebody to go do that analysis so fast that it covers it. And you, it may be that there's not a problem with it. So, you know, it may pay, but, but definitely the contract has in it that it's their responsibility to remove it. It's there. Um, so, you know, it could be a double-edged sword in that case. You get ridiculously high bids, you know, because of the fact they don't know what what kind of uh, hazardous substances are in there. Yeah. Okay. Mayor, I mean, I add, uh, yes. Um, 
it, what Jerry brought up, he had, it was actually on a ma my manager highly recommended that we get our own environmental assessment for asbestos or other um, hazardous material. And Robert reached out and was probably looking at only about five, six hundred dollars to do the, the, the wild building. So I don't think it'd be any more to do the, the old firehouse. Good. Is that something the council wants to do? Is anyone opposed to it? Well, that no. could be nice, right? In Say order again? to put out a decent bid, they need to know what they're going to be removing. Uh, yeah. So, okay. I can have a contractor here next week and do it hundred bucks. <laughs> I say we do it. Yeah. Okay. Also, um, at, at the last meeting or the meeting before that, um, council had said that they want to see the bids before we send them out. Sure do. You still want to do that? I can't hear you, Kim. I couldn't hear all that either. She said at the last meeting that you, Maria, you remember you asked to see the bids before they, before they sent them out. Do you still want to do that? No, what I said, I wanted to see what people bid in the packet oh. when we pick a bidder. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought that's what you had said. No, at the tail end, when people submit a bid, we only get what the last, what the recommendation is, but we don't see who the other people were. I wanted to see, you know, all of the bids. Okay. Understood. Okay. All right. Is there anything else on the church services center? I just want to clarify exactly what we're doing because we all talked. Okay. Go ahead. So, is, is Robert's going to go out and get somebody to do an estimate on the mold and the mold to be remediated, right? Yep. You're, you're going to get contractors to do that. So I'm presuming the money's going to come out of the insurance payment. That way it's not coming out of any other fund. Right. Then um, once we know what that is, then um, it's going to be inserted into the bid packet so that whoever's bidding on it knows what they're bidding on. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then when they come back, uh, we'll be responsible for tearing down the building out of that hurricane money. And then whatever's left over, we'll know. Um, once we get those bids and then we can discuss with the church service center whether or not we're going to give them funding to build their building. I personally would like to see them out of the Yana build of the streets department as was intend intended and because um, there's other grants that we could probably fix that building with as well. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure that that's everyone's on the same page. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Well, I, I have a question. I, yes. I've had uh, three contractors look at that building and, and none of them, none of them, they just said that they, they had the mold in it and the building was beyond repair. So now we got to get a bid on doing something with the mold and then we're going to get a bid on tearing the building down. We're going to find a place to put the mold stuff and to tear the building down. I said in January, this building wouldn't be tore down by July 4th and it won't be. This, this well, I, I, I just let me say, if you make a decision that you don't want to rebuild it, that you just want to tear it down, you don't have to do anything with the mold. That'll be part of the tear down. It's only asbestos you have to do something with either way. Yeah. Asbestos in a building. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait yeah. Okay. All right. I got you. Anything else on the church services center? <laughs> well, well, being done? What, what I don't know. Item number 13, airport budget discussion, Maria. Okay, this has been my on my side for a while now. So um, not included in here is the CRA budget, which is fine. You know, we got the same thing that we had last time and I should have specified to add the CRA info in there, but um, I'm working on some projects on my side job and um, I am aware that there are care dollars that are available for the airport. So there may be some things in here that, um, that we could do at the airport, but that's another conversation. Um, what I was going to do was I knew about the $30,000 because I had read the CARES Act. So I knew that this was coming down the pike. So I'm glad that we decided to use that 30,000 and help it. But the other information contained in here where we have, and by the way, part of the conversation that we were having with the CRAs was to see which areas we could save the airport money and all of these, this debt that they accumulated over time. Um, I don't know what the $470,000 is from resolution 15-09. Um, 
It would be curious to see operation expenses. Expenses. It seems as though the city was carrying the airport for quite some time at four hundred and seventy thousand dollars. What's changed? You know, are we making more money now? Obviously, because we're able to pay these debts, or was this just something that someone said we need to pay it? I really want to know why we owe four hundred and seventy thousand dollars to the sanitation fund. Um, where did that money come from? And if there's any info on it, it would be helpful at least for me to see whether, you know, where we go from here, because that's, that's a lot of money. Um, in regards to resolution 1213, which was $170,000, obviously tonight we applied the $30,000 of the operational expenses and debt service towards that, which drops that loan from 62,000 to 32,000. Um, if you drop that 32000 right there, it goes back to being able to hire someone at the airport, which when we got our budget for the airport for this current fiscal year, no one could tell me where that money was coming from because there is no money. It was going to go back into some kind of debt service, and there, we couldn't tell. Was it airport funded? Was it general fund? It, that was inserted into the budget, and I just don't know that it's ever going to be funded as long as we have all this other debt in here. So I was hoping that the council would consider that with the 30,000 that we just relieved that $62,000 balance off of, there's leaves it with 30,000, 32,000. Can we please forgive that? If we know that that's something that we're paying right now with our current revenues at the airport, then right there, you've got at least some money to put someone in there and sit at the airport, which we don't have, and has been the biggest complaint from all the airport people. We have this beautiful building has nobody in there to man it. Um, that's something that if we did that, then during the budget discussions, then we would actually have teeth to bite in and something to bite into to say that, yeah, we actually do have money for that. I was hoping that CRA might be able to fund the other half of that individual. That way the entire burden isn't put on the city alone. So again, if we forgive that, then that's $30,000 that clearly, if we're making a payment of um, $30,000 or, or no, I'm sorry, 15, what is it we're making, 15, 30, 40, making a $15,000 payment, then we have some expense money there for, for a position and, and man that. So, I mean, that's just the thought, but if you all have a better idea on how to get rid of some of these loans, um, aside from the fact that, you know, the city could afford, you know, defeating that loan at this point and just ending it. So that was my discussion on that one. The other one was, like I said, uh, resolution 1509, um, that $470,000. If there's no documentation available, then what was it borrowed for? And then finally on resolution 1510, when that $300,000 loan from the general fund was put in place, there was also $100,000 taken out of the CRA that got spent right up front to cover that contaminated site, which the CRA had no um, control over. So I would just want on that $300,000 general fund, you know, can we drag that one out a little bit longer? If it's between the city's departments, that means that the loan is probably 0.5%, if not lower. Um, I know that Jerry in the past has said that we have to have some level of interest, but if it's in there, then why can't we just drop it even more? That way it's just a hard cost dollar to dollar and no interest attached. And there again, if we did that, then we'd be able to get a little bit more money out of the um, airport fund to pay for this position. So I'm just thinking out loud in regards to that, but I would like to see the 70 that, or rather the balance of the 62,000, which is now 32, be forgiven. And just move on off of that one and only deal with the other two loans. And I again- have I have a question on that item, that same item though, that even going back to the original 170,000 loan with the balance of 62 plus, with four years left, why why is the payment forty seven thousand for four years? It's not. That's a typo. It's got to be a typo because the sixty two thousand dollar balance, if you divide it by four or four years, it actually comes out to fifteen thousand six hundred seven. So it's not <laughs> forty seven. It's got to be fifteen six hundred seven. That's a big typo error. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you I, just have to. Yeah, that's just a just a wrong number. So that anyway, doing the math, it would be like I said you'd still have a balance of 47,000 once you pay off that 30,000, um, I call it, uh, what is it, the CARES, 15, the, the 30,000, 15, yeah, that one. 
if it pays for that. So, you know, can we afford to forgive that loan? And that's a question to our accountant. Well, our loans for the bank. Huh? So, well, that's what I'm saying. This is paying it off. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. And well, plus, it, yeah, I mean, you all talked about it. If it's the one with the biggest interest, then it's the one that we need to get rid of. Yeah. So you brought up uh, three things here, all three of which it looks like the accountant needs to, or the finance director needs to look into. Would you agree? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there's a little bit of history there to look through. Obviously, that's not going to happen right this very minute. Um, so what would you like to accomplish? Is there anything that we can accomplish out of these three here tonight, Maria? Well, I'd like to find out if the Wachula State Bank has a penalty to pay it off early. If it doesn't, um, then we'll find out, right? Um, okay. You know, if we paid it, I don't, is it really in Wachula State Bank or is it between the city and, uh, I mean, the airport and, and the city itself? Because I want to say I remember that we defeated the Wachula. Remember the big famous word that was previously used by someone else? We yeah. defeated that bank loan. Right. I think that the resolution says Wachula State Bank, but I just wonder if it really is the bank, but I could be wrong. If not, if it's internal, then I need to know that. That way we can decide whether or not we want to forgive that bit. Okay. So obviously uh, Dan can look into that and get us that answer. I'm just looking um, at that uh, at there, the last page of that four-page uh, budget, <clears throat> um, there are two payments to the general fund there in that last section. Uh, the 16911 clearly that's that 1509 sanitation fund payment. And that uh -huh. the one right above it says general fund payment, 5770. I don't know how they got an extra $10,000 in the budget on that, but it appears to me that this money is being paid to the general fund and not to the bank. Right. Okay. Yeah. But can you verify that? You know, no, he, he's right. He's right. Yeah. But I don't see oh, well, the third payment. Uh, yeah, I don't see that third payment. How, how much was that amount of that second payment that you brought up? <laughs> well, okay, the, the 12 13 resolution, that payment is budgeted for 57,722. 57,000? Yes. And that's yeah. per year? Right, for this current year. Um, and uh, the. Well, the Actually, this it was only so it looks like it's ten thousand dollars more than the actual payment okay because that that obviously doesn't really make sense um, sure does. So I, I could resolution 1510 payment could be added into that but still the numbers are skewed right. somehow so yeah. I guess that would that would be your uh, your task is, is figure that out <laughs> figure out where the heck we are <laughs> so. Yeah, because if that number is different, then that means that the thirty thousand. I mean, it's still going to help from the grant, but yeah. Well, time. where I, where I was going with that was if we defeat that uh, sixty two thousand nine hundred, how much does that actually leave us with on an ongoing basis? Because you know, one year's payment is is kind of worthless thing ongoing. So, how much extra revenue is the airport going to have every year to keep someone on staff? Right. Right. Um, so, so, if that sixty two thousand nine hundred like you say, is divided by four, that's roughly 15,700. Um, now he says it's 57,000 that we're actually paying. <laughs> so if you add 15,7 plus another 15,8, that's 31. If we were paying, even if it was the lower amount of, uh, well, if it was 57 minus the 31, now you're mm -hmm. looking at about 26,000 in revenue every year that we could pay towards somebody so yeah you could you could do something with that and I, did you subtract did you subtract the thirty thousand that's gonna be from the grant into that yes right so yeah i mean that will pay for a portion the cra could pick up a little bit different and then depending on what happens with these other two resolutions this sanitation fund one i don't know what that means right but um one other thing that I wanted to bring up regarding the airport and its funding also is that the water department has a huge well on airport property and why isn't the sanitation or rather the water department paying the airport um, for that water. Okay. Do you, is there anything legal there that you're aware of, uh, of a reason why that would be, or, or could we charge for that? Could the airport charge for that? 
Yeah. I'll see okay. why not. Uh, Obviously, maybe, maybe Daniel can call me and talk to me about it. Let's uh, figure it out. Okay. And I wasn't saying we're going to pay fifty-seven thousand. That's just what's budgeted. Um, okay. We're going to pay the uh, what we're obligated to pay, um, or at least up to that amount, which I think. Is, uh, I'm just saying we're over budgeted, or so it appears to be about ten thousand dollars. Well, well is that is that budget line item all three resolutions all added up into one? Well, the one right below it is the uh, is the sanitation fund payment. So I don't know. Um, I don't. If you look at that same page at the previous two years, it was fifty one seven twenty two. Right. So did the five thousand extra get added in? It why? should be coming down. Okay. Dan, can you figure out for us uh, exactly what is required so, there and how much money on an ongoing basis per year we would have to be able to, to devote to a employee if need be? Sorry, I muted myself. Yes, I'll, we can do that. Very good. Is there anything else on the airport budget? Nope. All right. Seeing none, moving on to the <clears throat> city manager regular update. Okay, well, here the um, check in for the asbestos. Um, beginning or middle of last week, I got a uh, email from Nikki Day from Bryant Miller and Olive on the um, the land with the housing authority, and um, after title search. The title vests with the housing authority. It was never in Avon Park. And I have to set up a time where we can talk, but I just want to make sure you're directing still to go forward and, and um, Jerry, correct me if I'm wrong, but do a quick claim to do that to the city. Yeah. But yes. Whatever deed she recommends uh, to go with, obviously you need to, um, the title's been checked, so you now you know who, who owns it. Okay. Um, what else? Code and oh, go ahead, Mayor. No, nope, I was just asking you what else you had. Oh, the um, our code enforcement supervisor, a couple of you know um, who it is. I spoke to Randy LaBelle, who used to work at um, Sheriff's House and retired, was um, uh, had put in for it. He was the only one qualified. As I told HR when I first got here, if anybody puts in for any job, I completely recuse myself. I did. And um, Kim and David, the HR manager, and the only thing I did, I reached out to Linda Conrad, who I don't know if anybody knows, she's been the supervisor of code enforcement for the county for years. And um, she told me she really didn't know him, just his name, but didn't know who he was. So I hooked her up with David, and um, she was involved in the interview. Um, he is. Um, the background is done, and he had gone down to take his uh, drug testing and uh, has been offered a job. And uh, he is actually working in code enforcement down in, um, and David, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's Charlotte County. And uh, he's certified and actually also has a stormwater certification, which uh, can't hurt us. Oh, I'm getting noise. Can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, so just to let you know that it looks good, and hopefully, I, I don't know uh, when he'll start three weeks. He's been talking with David on that. Um, did, you, did you say that he had a stormwater certification as well? Yes, sir. Well, that's that's actually good because, well, you know, right now we're using an engineer for that, that information. What is his name? Uh, Randy LaBelle. Okay. He retired with the sheriff's office. Um, I actually I was direct supervisor for about seven years. So I know who like he I is. said, I took myself out of all that. Um, just a nice thing. Um, Ex-Mayor Aaron Schuler had emailed me and told me how nice the, um, uh, the mall was looking, and especially the gazebo where they've been working. And I pass that on, and the, uh, the troops really thought that was nice. And I, I want to thank Councilmember uh, Sutherland for coming out 
on short notice and helping Robert um, determine, you know, what kind of plants to put around it. Because as I told her, I don't know one plant from another. So uh, I, let me, I, I have a disclaimer here. I just threw out some names of plants. If they don't do well, don't blame me. Okay. Just well, that's a, that's a good <laughs> I won't know the difference anyway. So well, Stanley is the plant guru. If anyone needs well, any advice I, on I plants. Told, I told Stanley when I dropped by his house to get the, uh, Get him to sign something or where it was. I wish I had his yard because it's the nicest looking yard in, in the city, I think. But absolutely. Um, another thing is on this storm water, and, and Jerry's going to know where I'm going. Uh, this is a huge thing that's kind of been put off by the city for maybe a couple of years, and we're kind of way behind, and we got to play catch up. And um, back when Ronnie was here, he put in a notice of intent for. Uh, a generic permit for discharge of the um, stormwater in phase two, which we have to be compliant with, with DEP. And um, it got kicked back for some fixes, but what I found out after having a almost a two hour call with Robert and Craig uh, Fuller, the uh, engineer with Civil Serve, that that's normal. They're really drafts and they want us to add stuff, but Robert isn't a stormwater guy and wasn't all that involved in it. So he's the last guy I want to task more stuff on because he's got so much. Now he, him and I are going to sit down and we're going to go over this um, to make sure we both understand that we did get a, a, a month um, extension on it because of um, different things. There was no uh, big deal. They, they gave it to us when Craig asked him, but uh, this is an unfunded mandate. From what I'm understanding, there's no way our current staff, without being able to add some on, is going to be able to handle this. Um, Sebring um, was kind of got ahead of the curb, according to Craig and Highlands County. Was there um, pretty much caught up or catching up right now? But Robert's going to go down and meet with a public works director who he knows down in Sebring to see exactly what they're doing. I've already asked Craig to send us the forms that the county and the, um, the um, Sebring's using, and we're just going to take their forms and put our names on it like they did, that, and it's probably best everybody in the, the county is doing it. But my whole thing to bringing it to you is we're way behind on this, and, and to uh, uh, Craig saying uh, you're quite far behind. You can get there, but it's going to take a lot of work, and it's eventually going to take someone actually one or two people, maybe, depending on what Robert um, finds out. So I don't know if you got any questions on that. I'm, I, it's something I got to learn enough to know what we're doing and that we're going to, you know, um, abide by. There's a, there's a lot of, um, I don't know if any of you saw, but there's a, there's a lot of measurable goals for five years, and every year we got to prove what we're doing to DEP so and like I said I know Jerry knows this he made a comment that it's something coming up but it's I guess it's no longer kicking the can down the road it's something we have really got to do and again with turnover um, you know Ooh. that that didn't help anything so yep okay totally agree. Um, oh, anybody have anything I just said I totally agree Jerry okay thank you Jerry um, just the last thing, just F FYI, I saw the, the BOCC meeting. They got a special meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And I pulled up their agenda to see what it was. They're going to they're gonna have a presentation on COVID-19 status update by um, Mary Burns, who's the uh, administrator for our local health department. And then they're going to have a home status update from their emergency manager, um, Tasha Reese. Um, they're, up, they're going to have an update from Parks and Recs from uh, Rick Flieger, and they're going to have a home update on their community programs. I tried to get a hold of the administrator today just to see if there was more to it, but um, I couldn't get through to them, and they're as busy as uh, we are, and COVID-19, they got people working remote and that, but I was unable to get through to them. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on in the morning listening to what's going on, and I just want to know in case any of you want to listen to it. I do. Can okay. you send me it, the info? It, oh, I can, it's at 9. They're on, it, you go on the county website and they'll tell you how to get into their virtual. They, okay. They, they use the Microsoft one. Okay. All right, good.
And that's all I have, Mayor. I have a question hey. for you. Go ahead. Okay. I'd just like to know what's the update on the uh, demo for the property on Hal McRae. At our last meeting, I think the, the contract we, are, we, are, we assigned, um, we agreed to the, whoever the contractor was. Quest. Was that taken care of? Yeah, it was, it was Quest, I think, is heard. And they had signed it, but they have yet to bring me all their insurance documents. And I don't know if Kim has an update or not. I haven't talked to her a couple of days on that, but they have not brought them by like they're supposed to for the contract. Kim, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, he sent it. He sent over the signed, um, the signature page with the signature on it. Um, but when I sent it to him, I spelled out everything he was going to have to get back to us, and he hasn't done that yet. So no, I haven't heard any more. Okay, well then, okay. we'll up with a call with him tomorrow to find out where this is. Okay. I have Thank one question. question. I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, is the Bricker Building still for sale? I, I, I don't I don't know I thought weren't we going to list it I don't think it's listable just yet I know there's some interested parties out there that have been talking about it but I had referred a gentleman over to City Hall to pick up the keys and go take a look and he said he went to look and he said that it was in not very good shape <laughs> we know that <laughs> what, is that, what well, does that mean I mean I know it's not in good shape what does that mean is it sellable I mean well I, everything I, is sellable it's just because um, it, he complained that there was mold in the building, and I, I think that uh, Mark is working on that. Mold in the building. Well, wow. well there's that. always been mold in the building. Wow. wow. But his question is: Is the building up for sale? Yes or no? Why don't we yeah. have a Why don't we have a for sale sign on it? Th this was done before I got here. I don't know if it was. I heard there was some talk about marketing it, and I don't, Kim, if you're there, if you can add more, if you know. Well, Believe. Go ahead. No. Well, we we talked about marketing it, and we did get the appraisal. But since then, it seems that there is mold in the building, even though that the walls have been removed and stuff in there. Um, a air quality test was done as it's kind of similar to an air quality test i guess and it showed that there's mold in there and that it needs to be taken care of so at this point i don't know if it's something that is sellable unless we do something with that or it's just something we have to look into a little deeper and i know that um, mark and public works are working on that well, just, just keep getting surprises, you know. That's like the like the police station, you know. Now, now we got to find out about the mold in that. And now we're gonna have to find out about the mold in the Bricker building. And I declare, I thought just a month or two ago that building was deemed sellable. We got it appraised. Exactly. And we want to sell it. And and we didn't. We have a cleanup crew to go in there and do something for a couple I'm of months. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It just seems like it's a never-ending thing. The inmates, the inmates went in there, I think it was early last year, um, with Public Works, and they were doing a cleanup in there, but it, it seems that it wasn't enough. From, from what I found out was, um, yes, Robert went in with the inmates, with them all suited up with their safety guy, making sure they were suited up. They ripped out all the drywall. Shortly after that, they, um, they used a, a machine that they had got down at Lowe's, bought it, and um, they tested each of the rooms. I think it was four different rooms, and Robert's on can, can um, pipe up if it's uh, different, because it's just what I read after this came to my attention. And it showed, it, sent off, it came back that there was some um, spores in it of different types of molds. And about a month and a half later, they ran the same test, and it showed there was still some. It, was, it wasn't quite as um, elevated, but it still showed elevated. And this, I call the home testing, something you'd probably use in your home. It's machine about that big. But it, when you get it back from their lab or whatever lab it goes to, they tell you you should bring in a professional company to do it, and one was never brought in. Oh, so okay. that, we did it in-house. So it wasn't guaranteed it. or warranted. So all that for nothing, because we have to go back and do it again, I guess. 
Um, yeah, I don't see any other way around it. We, we have to get it. Just do it. Let's get it done. Well, I have a question in regards to that then. I mean, if Mark, you're done with your stuff, I just want to interject um, looking online again because of my side gig. I know that there are funds out there um, that $600 million, I, and I'm sure the council will remember, there was a $600 million fund from the DEO called mm -hmm. the CPP Hardening. And I listened to their webinar the other day and they will pay for, um, you know, removal and repairs, uh, stormwater windows, retrofitting buildings. Uh, they talked about mold as well, as long as it's a public building and it is a public building because it's owned by the city. Um, you know, they pay for a lot. And I, I spoke to Kim about it and I know she has a, a conversation with the DEO coming up soon, but there might be an opportunity for the city to be able to apply for funding to get the building fixed. And, you know, if it's the mold, then, you know, you could bid it out and just do it well without, because right now we don't have anything budgeted for that. You know, if we take money away, if we had known in June that this building needed more mold remediation, we certainly would have put it in the budget, but it was never requested. So, cause it was all done in house and apparently that wasn't enough. So anyway, before we start saying, let's do this, let's do that. Let's see if we can get this money. Um, there's a possibility of $15 million per, per minimum of 50,000 per project. And we can apply for as many projects as we want. So um, if Kim gets on the phone with them, she can ask them, you know, would this building fit the uh, criteria for getting funding? Um, it doesn't hurt to ask and maybe we can get that for that building along with others. My, my concern also was the mold at City Hall because I know that there's mold in there and this grant takes care of ventilation and AC units. So there might be an opportunity there for all kinds of grants coming down for this hardening um, mitigation. And again, it's, there's no ceiling to the request for funding per project. You can apply for as many as you want. We're in competition, I think with 56 or 58 counties but all the cities and municipalities and all those other entities that are within that um, number. So there will be hundreds of applicants, but I think we have a really good chance of getting funded for something. So why don't we throw this in the mix? And by the way, guys, I was wrong about the amount for the police building. Uh, it's not 90 something, it's $280,000 and $276. $280,000 is what and I'm looking at the, uh, Project Irma, by the way, no one's commented on my background. But anyway, it's right here. I got the amount right there. It's 280 something thousand. This is a copy of the check that came in from PGIT, which was the insurance company. So all along, I've been thinking it was 90 something. It's 280,000 okay. for the old police building. That was just for the police building? Yes, ma'am. In the bag? By, yeah. <laughs> So I, I know it's sitting there. I don't, I don't believe the money has been touched, but I mean, there were a lot of other things and I know that classic was a mix at the end, but, um, and the wild building, they said there was no insurance. It wasn't, I don't even think insured at the time because I don't think we owned it or whatever, but there was a bunch of other catastrophic losses at all the hangers. And that was another question I was going to have for Robert is that, 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 uh, that did that all get done? Do we have any other problems with any other hangers? Robert's not on. Okay. Um, but anyway, there were a bunch. Kim, I don't know if you'd gone through my, my binder. Or when you go through it, drop it off. You can look at this check copy and you'll see what's what. Okay. But there was also money for, um, like I said, uh, the hangers, a bunch of them. The FBO building had money and um, all the hangers, including Mr. Poole's hanger, which is a hideous building in and of itself. Okay. Anyway. But anyway, so if anyone applies for that grant um, on the uh, DEO, um, it would be really helpful. I think you can apply. I know that there's funding for the airport as well, which is separate from this one, or you can combine it with this one. But I know that the CARES Act has airport grants as well um, that we could get money fronted to us now for, for other airport things that are in our capital improvement plan for the airport. And they don't have a match. That's the beauty of this DEO grant. There's no match on it. So it would save us, you know, 10% of whatever projects we have for the airport, which I don't have a list of that. But anyway, that's the info I have. But I just wanted to say 280 something thousand for the 
um, police building. That's good news. Very good. Is there anything else? Who do we have in charge of writing all these grants? Whose job is that? Well, right yeah. now we don't have a, a grant writer. Um, Kim is going to take Okay, looking at the ones that um, Councilman Sutherland's talking about, and and Danielle is taking care of the grants at the uh, airport right now. And when we get our engineer, there's a lot of other ones there as well. I mean, um, I don't know what's the status on. Have you have you had any applications yet? Mark? We had. I had a list. There was about ten or twelve to put in. Whether any one of them are qualified, what we put out. Uh, at least 10 maybe 11 of them are yay <laughs> well I would hope that I mean this grant is uh, I think the deadline was May the 4th I'm not exactly no I'm sorry it's later on than that but um, Kim will find out when she speaks to those people when she has her conversation okay is there anything else for the good of the city Seeing nothing, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. What, Seeing no opposition, we are. We have a citizen. Say again. Oh, a, citizen. No, we have a guest to hear. And we have a citizen. citizen, so I don't know if we need public participation. We don't have to specify it, but if he has any questions to ask, he can do so. Did he leave? No. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Thank well, you. Well, to adjourn, is, does he have his hand up? No. I have Seeing, no questions. <laughs> thank okay. you. Seeing no opposition, we are adjourned. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thanks, everybody. All right.